Greetings, Eric Baker. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I love seeing new faces and also old familiar faces, of course. I'm really pleased with this channel. It's been going now for several years. I might not have 10 billion subscribers like you know some crazy channels do, but I've got a few subscribers. I'm happy. It's a niche channel, but the niche is going to get bigger and bigger because I love this kind of work. Just a quick reminder to everybody. You see this sign? It's just about gone, okay? This is one of my first clinic signs. I think this, this one's probably about 27 years old or something like that. Lovely old sign. So this will be a nice memento for me to hang on to. Might put that in my bar area. Clinic, how's that for an idea? And um, it reminds me of all the year, many years that I've seen so many patients, so many people who've taught me so many different things. Stuff that I'm gonna show you today, okay? So we're gonna talk about acid reflux. We're gonna talk about GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So many, many people I've seen over the years in many countries, now particularly with Skype and FaceTime, I've seen people in so many countries, as you know, probably over 60 countries, so many people I've seen get GERD, they get acid reflux, they're sick of it. They're sick of taking Nexium, they're sick of taking acid blocking medication. I've had people say to me, Eric, how the hell did I get this? Why did I get GERD? Why am I getting this heartburn, this stuff coming in my throat all the time? It's driving me crazy. I want to get rid of it. So this is going to be a neat video and I want you to watch this video maybe once or twice all the way through because there's going to be a lot of good information in this video. Stuff that you probably know, stuff that you don't know, and things I'm going to speak from from my experience of seeing a lot of people with reflux disease. I had reflux disease when I was about 27, and I'll tell you why in a minute, all right? Now, here's a page. In fact, this is page 257 out of Candida Crusher, out of my book, all right? Now, what does it say there? Your stomach is like a cement mixer. Let's talk about that a little bit. But before we go into that, a key thing that you need to know is you chew food, you swallow it, it goes down the esophagus. There's a small sphincter or a round sort of circular muscle I call the les, lower esophageal sphincter. I call him like les as in a male. And um, what the les does is it basically stops food coming back out the stomach once it goes in. So when you chew, chew, chew and swallow, it stimulates les to open up. Food goes in there, les closes up. Food sits in there nicely. A little bit like a washing machine. So the stomach starts moving around, okay, and it produces this stuff called chyme, like it's a milky kind of a weird substance. As food goes in there, acids, okay, pepsin, digestive enzymes are produced to help to break this mass of food down. It turns into a nice mixture, which then gets squirted into the duodenum, or we call the duodenum, or the small intestine. So most of the protein digestion, for example, take place in the stomach, finished off in the, in the small intestine. Healthy people like me have no problem with their stomach. Now, I'm going to tell you why you get GERD, okay? Once you understand this principle, you'll probably be in a really good position to say, now I know why, and I want to do something about it, all right? Now, this video is not like a cure-all that everybody gets good because of these reasons, but the vast majority of patients I've seen get reflux disease because of the reasons I'm going to outline in a minute. And I'm talking 90% plus, which is a lot of people, right? All right, let's start off with this little article here that I wrote. <coughs> Your stomach is like a cement mixer. Would you like to read it out to me? It's only a few paragraphs. I don't think you'll mind. All right, let's go. I find it helpful to explain digestion in simplistic ways. People tend to remember it a lot better that way and can picture these explanations in their own mind, better than showing them complex charts of digestive organs and a bunch of fancy Latin names, okay, that mean nothing to you at all, all right? I can't stand it when I'm talking to someone and they come in with all this fantastic language and these beautiful words and sentences that I haven't got a clue what they're on about. Just say it how it is. We don't need all the fluff and crap that goes with it, all right? So, a cement mixer to me is a lot like a stomach. All right, now you might find that a crazy kind of comparison, but you won't in a minute. I've never heard it put like this before, but I'm a practical man, okay? I'm a working class boy. I've always driven trucks and, you know, and I've dug holes and I even almost became a grave digger at one stage. I love digging and gardening, as you probably know. So I'm a practical guy. Now, a cement mixer is like a stomach. You place gravel, sand, and cement or cement powder into this thing, okay? 
Then you put a bit of water in it. Sometimes you like to have a drink with our meals too. Okay, so you could liken that a bit like carbs, proteins, and fats that you're throwing into your stomach. And then you add water and mix it. Chewing food is like running a cement mixer. It needs to be done thoroughly and properly or the mix won't be very good. Right? So meaning that the stomach has to churn up this food, break it down, produce sufficient enzymes, digestive enzymes, you know, acid, things like that to break this down. Right? Many folks eat too quick. Chewing foods once or twice and swallowing it. Imagine what kind of concrete that produces if you chucked everything in and then quickly threw it all out again. That concrete wouldn't last long, would it? A concrete truck, in fact, constantly agitates the mix. A bit like a camel constantly chewing food. A bit like some of my patients from the, you know, Saudis I've seen over the years and then Dubai. And some of the Arabs I've spoken to can, have told me they can chew a date for four or five hours. One fresh date for four or five hours. Whereas you and I would chew it and swallow it in two seconds, probably chomp, chomp, gone, and then another date, and then another date, okay? That's not really good for the stomach, right? Your stomach produces a fluid called chyme, a liquid substance found in the stomach before passing through a small valve into the small intestine. It results from mechanical and chemical breakdown and consists of partially digested foods, water, hydrochloric acid, and several enzymes. I was helping a friend last year build a raised garden for his vegetables. We had to mix concrete as part of the job, and he said to only ever fill the cement mixer no more than three quarters, preferably under that, okay? So, and once you work with a cement mixer like I have over time, you'll realize that if you put a little bit too much in, it starts slopping around and flies out, and can come out here like reflux, okay? Now, there's no les on the cement mixer, okay? We can't constrict the mouth of the cement mixer down. So in this case, the les is open all the time. So a good person or a person who knows concreting will understand the principle of the correct mix, the correct amount, the duration of the mix, and all that kind of stuff, all right? Now, once I tried to pour more in, when I first started making concrete, it didn't work and I started to realize how the stomach was quite similar. In fact, if you eat small meals and take your time eating and chew properly, your digestion will be much more efficient because you break down the food particles to a very small particle size. Also, it'll mean you're gonna be fuller quicker, okay? You're gonna feel more satisfied, the satiety thing. We've talked about a lot about this in previous videos, if you remember. Satiety is big. Take your time to eat. Don't gobble food down. Why do you think people get reflux disease? I'll tell you why. They eat too much food. They eat far too much food. Oh, jeez, there goes my water again. Oh, man. I get so excited, guys. Look at that. Sorry about that. Okay? That's the cement mixer. In this case, it's the water I've spilled. I shouldn't get so excited. Um, they eat too much food, I was trying to say to you all, okay? So... I witness people a lot when I go out. Right? When Tracy and I went to Los Angeles a few years ago and we sat down in this food court, blooming hell, I'm soaking. I could not believe how much food people were eating, how large the portion sizes, how quickly people were eating. It freaked me out. It was like being at a zoo, honestly. I believe from where I'm sitting, one of the major causes of GERD is too much food, eating too quick, large portion sizes, and the wrong kind of foods. All right? And a big thing we're finding today is technology, all these huge, big OLED TV screens, you know, 80 inches, people sitting in front of that with pizzas and beer and stuff like that, not concentrating on eating, and then getting esophageal reflux disease. It's not a good idea, right? So let me talk about a couple of the causes which I've written down here. Typical causes we see, okay? Eating large meals, as we said, or lying down after a meal, being overweight or obese, having too much fat, okay, or things pushing into your stomach, okay, that can really constrict your stomach too in a big sense and make it quite sort of spilly, if you know what I mean, all right? Very big people have got a big problem because often they have a big appetite, their stomach stretches. And this is why often, if you look at certain types of operations to put a band around, you know, close to les there, shut that off, or to make the stomach smaller, can have a dramatic impact on dropping weight from that person, all right? So, but the big one from what I see it is too much food, all right? Eating a heavy meal and lying on your back is a big one. Eating too much fat, eating too much acid-forming foods. And then I, I watched some stupid um, YouTube video where a person said, if you want to get rid of GERD, just stop eating all tomatoes. What a load of crap! 
But what about fries, French fries? What about alcohol? What about, you know, so many other embalmed foods and takeaway foods people eat? It's not, don't point the finger at tomatoes. Please don't do that. You get me really upset. All right? Snacking close to bedtime. Eating in bed. Eating potato chips in bed. I had a patient that was eating a big bag of crisps every night in bed watching TV, okay, and then complained to me about GERD. I mean, I just laughed at this guy while well, I felt like laughing. It was almost laughable that this person could not understand that the reflux was because of some crazy, ridiculous lifestyle habit, right? Eating certain types of foods. So people will get triggers. Once a stomach gets too big and Les gets a bit lazy, okay, because Les does get lazy, Men get lazy, as you know, okay? And it relaxes a bit too much. It gets spilly, and the person lies down. The next thing, they start getting this, okay? So it's the esophageal reflux that really annoys people is when the acid starts coming up into here, okay? And it can cause a lot of problems. In fact, if you have this going on and on and on for years, you can even be more prone to certain types of cancers of the digestive system by having this. Stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, I had this disease when I was 26, I think 25, just before I started really getting into naturopathy. It was my own stupid fault. I was a truck driver, right, for many years, like five years. I didn't, I sort of tried to eat the right kind of foods most of the times, but then occasionally I'd do something dumb, like have something deep fried for breakfast or something like that, stupid. I'd be tipping garbage cans at a shop and the guy would give me, you know, five or six packets of chips or something or some crap, and I'd be eating that in the morning. And that's why I went GERD. Once I stopped these stupid habits completely, the GERD went away. All right? I got sick and tired of having this constant burping and acid coming up day after day for weeks. Only lasted about three or four weeks with me, but I canned it because I canned the dumb behavior that was a trigger for that particular problem. I couldn't stand it. It was an awful thing to have. So alcohol can do it sometimes. So you need to watch out for certain key foods when you have GERD, all right? Garlic, onions, tomatoes can trigger it for some people, uh, spicy foods, fatty foods. Once you get over the top of this problem and you heal the esophagus and Les gets a bit stronger and more compliant, okay, the GERD will go away. You know? Smoking is a big one for many people. And like being pregnant, because my wife had um, quite bad reflux disease when she was pregnant. With her four children, one pregnancy ended up, she ended up with sciatica, another one she ended up with GERD, and after the fourth one, she told me to keep away because she didn't want to end up in a hospital with more diseases. Well, not quite that bad, but you know what I mean. Now, taking medications is a big, big trigger for many people, okay? Especially non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs can do it too, okay? Ibuprofen, aspirin, some blood pressure medications. So, as you can see, it's a complex condition, there are many different causes. But for where I'm sitting, and I'm wet, <laughs> um, for where I'm sitting, most cases of GERD can be stopped and reversed by changing the habit that underpins GERD. Think carefully if you've got GERD right now. Now look at me and think carefully. Are you eating something that you shouldn't be eating? Are you eating at the wrong time of day? Are you eating in bed? Are you eating huge portion sizes? Do you go to buffets and stuff your face like a lot of people? Don't do it. You'll pay the price when you get older. There is nothing worse than having GERD when you get to my age. You don't want GERD, okay? It makes your life miserable. Now, you can get rid of this condition, but it's going to take time. Unfortunately, many people start taking medications on a daily basis, and they continue them without stopping. It's almost like they don't pay off their credit card, and in time, it bites them in the... Well, I'm not going to say it, but you know what I mean, all right? So you don't need to be bitten there. You just need to understand cause and effect. If you've got GERD, okay, I appreciate it. Let's try and get rid of it. Watch some more of my videos because we've got a few more coming up on GERD and we're going to talk more in detail about it. Yeah, we're going to do a few videos on GERD because we've had a lot of questions regarding this, okay? Now remember the key thing also, when you've got this condition and you've had it for a while, it'll slowly start affecting the small bowel, the large bowel, everything will get affected. You'll notice that you'll get more tired, more grumpy, you can't sleep properly, you could have appetite problems, and you know you can't really be effective. Once the stomach starts getting affected and going down and really causing issues up here and the sphincter starts you know, pinging out on you, it's going to really affect the quality of your life. Many people, especially men, in my opinion, 
make changes only when the symptoms get that unbearable that they don't really want to live like that anymore. But unfortunately, a lot of them will continue to take the medication. And that is one of the worst things you can do. Reflux medications in the US are several billion dollars a year because mainly people don't want to make the changes to their lifestyle. And time will catch up with those people, unfortunately. So, But I can tell you now, I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people get rid of GERD just by changing lifestyle habits. Simple, smaller portion sizes. Take certain aggravating foods out first. Okay. Work more on exercise and walking, okay? eating properly, chewing properly, all those kind of things. Careful about drinking with meals, identifying the key trigger foods. Often there's one or two key triggers. Take them out, just temporarily. Okay, No alcohol, minimize medications. There are lots of solutions for you to get rid of GERD. If you're taking a kind of medication now, that's okay. You can come off that slowly over time. But the longer you stay on these medications, the more your entire health will become undermined because you'll start robbing your body of the nutrients that it really needs to build healthy tissue. You're going to get a lot of problems and eventually get dysbiosis and candida problems, SIBO, everything goes with it, all right? So I hope this has been a bit of an eye-opener for you guys out there and that you understand the concept of the cement mixer. Always keep the cement mixer a half to three-quarter full. The first thing I'd like you to do once you've seen this video is to start looking at your dinner plate and buy a slightly smaller dinner plate, all right? Because psychologically, if you've got a smaller plate full, you think, oh, I've got a lot of food here to eat. But if you've got a large plate and you put a portion on there, it still looks small, okay? Tracy and I, a long time ago, started understood this concept and eat smaller portion sizes. It's much, much better for you in the long run. I can tell you there are many, many studies that have shown that rats and mice and humans and other animals that they've studied when these you know, animals eat smaller portion sizes for a long, long, long period of time, they extend their lifespan by 10 years. The more you eat, the shorter your lifespan. Okay? So if you don't want to take advice here, enjoy your food while you can, all right? Because you're gone a long time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Click on the link if you uh, want my free Candida report. Thanks for tuning in.